Hello and good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Franklin. I'm one of the two co-founders of NorCal SCI, also known as uh, the Northern California Spinal Cord Injury Foundation. Welcome to tonight's presentation of uh, Cooking with Arash. Uh, it's part of the uh, series of presentations that's been made possible by a generous grant from the Reeve Foundation. Uh, tonight's uh, session is going to be focused on cooking whole grains, and uh, Arash is uh, ready to uh, to get started with his uh, sort of demonstration of how he uses various types of whole grains to cook for himself and his family, which I just found out today is going to be getting a new addition. So his wife is uh, pregnant with their second uh, baby. Very happy for them. Okay, a uh, couple of uh, housekeeping items. Um, as usual, everyone is muted, and that way we could el eliminate any background distractions. If uh, you wish to ask any questions, uh, there's going to be about a 10-minute Q&A session at the end of tonight's presentation. Uh, so feel free to feed me your questions through the chat feature on Zoom, and I'll uh, pose those questions to Arash at the end. And uh, The second thing is, as usual, we record all of our presentations, and we make them available to everyone who has registered for them. So if you need to jump off the uh, tonight's uh, demonstration, which we hope you won't, but if you must, uh, no worries. Uh, the recording will be available to everyone who has registered um, on Monday uh, morning. It'll be in your inbox. So um, those are kind of the basic housekeeping items that I wanted to get out of the way. So without further ado, let me go ahead and introduce Arash. Uh, he experienced a C5, C6 uh, incomplete SCI in 2012 as a result of a fall. Um, he has given a, no, numerous talks and shared his story of perseverance, recovery, and challenging limits to audiences large and small, including a TEDx talk. Uh, he's a Bay Area native and currently makes his home in Walnut Creek, and he credits his California upbringing for his love of the outdoors, nature, and, of course, cooking. Um, he still cherishes uh, all these activities, and he continues to travel and explore the world and enjoy uh, new experiences. Uh, as I mentioned, he's married uh, with a daughter and a new a second one on, on his or her way. We don't know yet. And uh, he's uh, not only a good friend, but he also happens to uh, serve on NorCal SCI's board of directors. So uh, I'm grateful that he takes time out of his busy schedule to uh, make these presentations possible. So Arash, uh, take it away. It's all yours. All right. Thank you, Franklin. Real quick. Can you hear me okay? Thumbs up, Franklin. Yep, uh, you're good. All right. Okay. So thank you all for joining the third session. Um, again, this is a follow-up to or in conjunction with um, Shelly Wood and her presentations that she's done on the nutritional side of everything. So for anyone who has not um, watch those presentations. I highly recommend you do so. Shelly is a wealth of information. She has great um, advice on uh, specifics of nutrition and what to eat for spinal cord injury. So she does a lot of the nuts and bolts and the diet and nutrition and, and the science behind everything. And I'm here to talk about the cooking. So without further ado, let's get into it. As usual, if you've joined for the previous two sessions, you know that uh, I have an ambitious schedule every time, so I've got a lot to talk about as always. I love this subject. Carbs and whole grains are a really big part of the cooking that I do all the time. It's a great part of cooking, especially when you're, you're trying to eat healthier, eat lots of fiber. Again, I'm gonna bring that up every time because we all know how important fiber is for spinal cord injury, uh, digestion, bowel program, et cetera. So, um, carbs and whole grains is, is fantastic. Um, so um, let's um, jump right in. Uh, I'm going to review quickly my four principles as always. I'll repeat it again here. Number one, tasty. Number two, fun. Number three, efficient. And number four, economical. Those are my four principles of cooking. I try to do that all the time. It's how I cook. And today's presentation is a lot actually about the last two of those, efficient and economical, because um, integrating lots of good, healthy carbs and whole grains into your diet is uh, can be really easy to do, really inexpensive, um, and honestly, it's uh, it, it's very efficient. And I'll talk about why in just a moment. I want to throw just one fact that Shelley presented in her presentation last time 
um, that I thought is important for everyone to know is that 45 to 65 percent of your daily calories um, should come from whole grains and uh, carbs. So that's straight from Shelly. Um, obviously, that's a little bit of a range, but uh, and it can be even higher, especially if you're fully plant based. Um, so keep that in mind. Whole grains and carbs is a really, really big part of a healthy diet. So we're going to talk about it a lot. OK, specifically. Um, Whole grains and carbs, uh, obviously it's a big category of things. If you saw Pre Shelley's presentation, there's a huge list. I'm gonna talk about a few, um, really just talking about healthy options of integrating carbs into your diet. Carbs in that term has kind of a bad rap. So we're gonna try to undo that and, and educate everybody that um, it can and is healthy to eat good, healthy whole grains. But if you're doing it with refined sugar, refined, you know, cheap, um, uh, grains like, uh, you know, just like bad quality grains or, you know, inexpensive pasta or, you know, something like that, then um, it can be more unhealthy, but we're going to talk about the healthy way to do it. So um, let's see, um, whole grains and carbs, it's really easy to integrate because it's really easy to keep them. There's no, they're generally not perishable. Um, I keep everything in jars in my pantry. Um, so I have probably like 20 or 25 different whole grains in the pantry. We're talking about brown rice, quinoa, um, wild rice, um, different types of grains like farro, which is what I'm going to talk about a little bit tonight. Um, sweet potatoes does not live in the pantry, but, um, but another type of, of whole grain or carb, a healthy, uh, I'm going to talk about even about just the humble potato tonight. So, um, so it's really, really great to stock up on whole grains and carbs, have stuff in your pantry. And what I like to talk about with this is think about um, whole grains and carbs as an easy way to build your dishes, build your meals around um, the, the specific thing. So if you're wanting to try a new whole grain that you haven't tried, or if you like something, you know, you like brown rice or you like, um, you know, quinoa, whatever it is, then start with that. And then you can kind of build around that. And that leads me to the main reason why eating whole grains um, is so uh, economical and efficient is that um, we can talk about batch cooking and batch cooking. I know Shelly's a big fan of this too, is the idea of you do a bunch of stuff at one time. Let's say when you go grocery shopping or you get your groceries delivered, you know, in this time of, of COVID, you do a bunch of the work at one time and you cook a bunch of stuff. And then throughout the week or throughout the next few days, you kind of build around that. So that is a very, very great way to cook, especially when it comes to integrating whole grains, healthy whole grains into your diet. So um, what I recommend is, and what I do myself often is just, I'll cook a lot of something. I'll cook a big thing of quinoa or I'll cook a big thing of, you know, uh, a specific whole grain and then I'll keep it in the fridge. It stays good for a few days. And then throughout the week, you can make a salad. You can put it in a soup. You can put it into make it its own thing. So I'm going to show you a couple different things tonight to, to show you the versatility of how you use the same ingredient in creative ways and, um, and a couple different dishes. And I'm proud to say that all my dishes I'm making for you tonight actually have more than one. I think they all have two or more whole grains in them. And I didn't even really plan that. That's just kind of how it turned out. So, um, all right, um, let's go with the first thing we're going to make. We're going to talk about quinoa. I love quinoa. Uh, hopefully many of you, if not all by that, by this point, you're at least somewhat familiar with it. You know what it is. It's technically a seed. It's not a grain, but it's very much used in conversations about whole grains because it cooks like a grain. Uh, it's often substituted for rice. That's a great way to eat it. Um, and uh, other, I mean, there's a million things you can do with quinoa. You can make it into a lot of different things, but um, I wanted to start with quinoa because it's super healthy. It's packed with protein. I think pound for pound or ounce for ounce. It has like twice as much protein as, uh, as beef does. Um, it also has lots of fiber. I think it has omega-3s as well. I forget, but um, it's super healthy and it's super versatile. So what I did back to my batch cooking point, and I'm going to um, reference some of this at the end of the presentation is I made my quinoa previously. I made all the grains I'm sharing with you tonight. I made them uh, yesterday. So this is what I mean by batch cooking. I took a cup of quinoa. I cooked it in water. Done got it ready, put it in the fridge. And now I'm going to make a quinoa 
salad for you to start with. Uh, this is a super easy thing to make. You can, uh, again, as you know, my recipes, um, it's not like a strict recipe. I'm trying to give you guidance on how to make something. And then so you can run away with it and make it with what you like, what you don't like, um, make it suited to your taste, but you know, keeping the integrity of the, the taste and the healthiness of it. So um, I think we can jump into, I'm trying to think if there's anything I wanted to say, but um, yeah, quinoa, uh, I cooked it ahead of time. I'm gonna throw together a quick salad. Obviously I, I prepped a few of these things ahead of time because we just don't have enough time for me to chop and cook everything all at the same time. Um, so I'm gonna kind of show you this first dish. This is, uh, again, I cooked the quinoa, put it in a bowl. Um, you can do whatever you want. What I did in this specific case, and this is what I mean about building your dish around the whole grain is, I was like, oh, what vegetables do I have that I can roast and put into this salad? Cool, I had some baby broccoli and a little bit of sweet potato. Uh, the rest went for my daughter, so I didn't have a ton, but a little bit of sweet potato, that's carb, healthy carb number two in this dish. And uh, I had a little bit of red onions and instead of adding raw red onions, uh, which I love too, uh, I decided to roast the red onions in the oven. So basically let's grab the camera. My lovely wife camera person is helping me here. So, yeah, so here we have quinoa. This was from um, a cup of cup of um, raw quinoa, but this isn't even all of it. I still have some left over. So you can see it kind of goes a long way. Um, so this is just cooked quinoa. I've done nothing to it here. All I'm doing now is um, I had some parsley um, that I chopped up. I'm adding some parsley. Uh, I'm a huge fan of fresh herbs. I had some feta cheese. Yes, it is cheese. I'm usually, I don't eat a ton of cheese, but in this case, there was some in the fridge. So I said, hey, what the, what the hey, why not? Let's throw it in. Um, it goes really well in a salad like this as well. So I'm gonna keep a little of this. And then in my garden, which I'm starting to work on, I picked a little bit. I didn't grow the parsley myself, but I picked some, um, some tarragon and some chives. So uh, as you all know, I always say, you know, apron on, cutting board on the lap. I'm just gonna chop up some of these herbs, throw those in to my salad to make this lovely salad, which then, yeah, this can be an easy lunch for um, a couple of days. So, all right, looks okay right now. It's kind of monotone, just kind of green, but now, is when it gets fun. So if you follow me here, I just want to show you how easy it is. Again, this is just what I had. You can do whatever you want. If you have uh, carrots, if you have fennel, you know, any vegetables you like, any vegetables you have. I just stuck them on this pan, roasted them in the oven. I sprinkled a little bit of uh, olive oil and uh, salt and pepper on, and that's it. Just comes out. My sweet potatoes are ready to go. My onions, I'm just gonna cut up as well real quick. Um, and then this is baby broccoli. Um, I didn't do anything to it. I just stuck it on the tray and now it's nice and cooked, but it's a little long. So I am gonna chop it up into some smaller pieces. So tongs, very good tool. I recommend, I'm gonna put this all on the cutting board. And since my potatoes are already chopped up, Let's see, I'll, I'll chop these up first. And, uh, and you see what's nice about this too is you add some nice color. I'm just chopping everything into smaller pieces. And um, it really, um, color does matter. You, we do eat with our eyes. When something looks nice, um, we're more inclined to want to eat it. Um, and that's just the truth with all of cooking and all of food. So got some nice red onion. And again, I'm, I'm not too strict. I like it kind of rustic and chunky and whatever. So and now we've got our broccoli. I like bigger pieces. I'm just going to go one, two, and three. All right. And then my oven's not hot anymore. Don't worry. So now I'm just going to scoop this up, bring it all onto my cutting board. This is like the command center of all of my cooking. <laughs> and I'm gonna stick this away. So. Now, you see it's a lot prettier. Got my bowl, 
And actually what I'm gonna do now is, um, same thing, I'm gonna hold this, I, I'm, I'm able to hold the bowl and I just kind of scoop everything in here. Broccoli, sweet potatoes, and red onion. Great, looking better already. So we've got our quinoa on there. Now we got to toss this all, but before we do that, we want to give it a little more flavor because you don't want like a dry salad. So I'm going to go just light on the olive oil, just a little bit of olive oil to give it a little, um, a little moisture and a little flavor and just simple salt and pepper, not too much um, light seasoning. Remember that feta cheese has, uh, is quite salty. So that's why I added almost no salt to this. And then the other thing I added, I'm going to add is some lemon juice. This is a little lemon juicer thing. You can squeeze it ahead of time. And I've got my juice in here. And this is really important actually, because you do want a little bit of acid for a salad like this. Quinoa soaks up liquid, it soaks up the olive oil, it soaks up the lemon juice. So um, that's the juice of uh, one and a half lemons um, in there. And then we're just going to toss this around and we've got a beautiful salad. Um, you can eat this room temperature, you can eat it cold. Um, a lot of the stuff I'm preparing today I'm also doing with an eye to Thanksgiving. So if you, I know we're not really getting together with our families, but if you're making a, a Thanksgiving meal for yourself or your family, this is great. Now we've got this beautiful quinoa salad sweet potatoes as well. That's two healthy whole grains in one dish. So done. And I get a little taste of the bonus. I'm going to rinse off my board before I move to the next thing. So this specifically, uh, the next thing we're going to make is um, very much an eye to Thanksgiving. I was trying to think of like what's something fun I could make for people um, that's plant-based, that'll kind of uh, fit that mood. And I thought about stuffing because I always really liked stuffing, um, but I'm not doing like a traditional stuffing. I'm doing a farro stuffing. And what is farro? Farro is another whole grain, super healthy. I think it originates in Italy. They, they use it a lot in Italian cooking. It's gotten a little trendier. You can, um, you can uh, uh, find it really easily now. They sell it at Trader Joe's. They sell it um, uh, in all kinds of places. And uh, it's, it's super healthy, like with any of these other whole, healthy whole grains. It's high in fiber, it's a uh, good, uh, I think glycemic index, all these things that are, that are good for your health. And it's a very, very healthy and easy way to integrate um, whole grains into your diet. So what I did was, like I said with the quinoa, all I did was I just cooked some farro. Oh, actually I'm getting, ahead of myself. That's for my last recipe. This is my farro over here. Okay. So this is farro and it's actually some uh, wild rice mixed in as well. These are both whole grains. I cook them together. They take about the same amount of time to cook. Uh, and so I just cook these again ahead of time. I'm going to show you at the end of our session how I cook any whole grain. It's foolproof. You can't mess it up. I promise you, I will show you how that all works. So, uh, so this is um, probably about a third of a cup of dry farro and about a quarter of a cup of, uh, of wild rice. This is forbidden rice. It's a black rice. It's very, very, very healthy for you. Um, so I just mixed them up together. I cooked them separately, but I just threw them together. So this is very much in an ode to like a good, like a Thanksgiving meal. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make some mushroom, I'm gonna saute some mushrooms and um, a little bit of some aromatics, some other stuff, mix it into my farro and wild rice. And I've got like a stuffing or some people call it dressing. Um, so I've got my pan on here. I've got a nice wide pan because I know I'm gonna need it. And yeah, got it on about medium heat. Cutting up an onion. I've already done this a couple of times on these sessions, so I won't bore you again. I've mentioned how important it is because onions go in pretty much everything. Uh -huh. So uh, it's good to find a way to get proficient at cutting those. 
Um, so I've got my pan on about medium heat and my olive oil is hiding over here. So I'm going to add just about a tablespoon of olive oil to my pan. Work it around. And again, this is versatile. You can do whatever you want. You can look up recipes. You can get inspiration. I'm just doing this based on the things I like. I like mushrooms. I like kale. It goes well together. It's very much like fall. Um, so I'm going to start with a little bit of that diced red onion. Give it a little shake. And I'll just show you in the meantime. So these are my mushrooms that I'm going to add to this. Uh, these were like um, not your normal white mushrooms, but you can use any mushroom you like. Portobello's, you can use little normal white button mushrooms, brown mushrooms, whatever. So I'm just getting the onions going. Um, and I've also got some let's see, mushrooms, kale, and some garlic going into this. And um, yeah, this is a super fun way to eat any whole grains. Um, like I said, if you make them ahead of time, you can use them in so many different ways. And that was part of my intention tonight, was to show you the different ways to use whole grains. So I've got a salad already. I'm gonna eat the rest of that quinoa as a rice. So I'll make something that I would eat with rice, but I'll replace the rice with quinoa. It's just healthier and better. Um, so that's one thing I'll be doing. And then now with this batch of farro that I cook, I'm making this stuffing. And then in my last thing, I'm also gonna make a soup with the same batch of farro. So this is what I meant by batch cooking and why it's so important to, and helpful to just make a bunch of stuff ahead of time and go from there. I've got a couple cloves of garlic, big cloves. I love garlic. Um, you've heard me say it before. So, and you do, it is generally better to add garlic a couple minutes after you add your onions. Garlic burns a lot quicker than onions. So that's why I, um, I waited a couple minutes to add the garlic. And all right, I'm gonna go in with my mushrooms. Mushrooms are in. I'm gonna turn my, hopefully that's not too distracting, the, the fan so we don't smoke the kitchen out. I'll turn it down. And in the meantime, I mean, I can tell you cooking whole grains is just such an easy and fun and um, effective way to really get your diet healthier. Um, if we kind of mystify it and think like, oh my God, how am I gonna eat this? And, and you just eat it plain, it might not taste that good. But that's why I cook it plain. I cook grains like these. And what I'm talking about can go for farro, for quinoa, for brown rice, wild rice, forbidden rice is the one I'm using. Um, gosh, I'm blanking on all the other great, um, you know, whole grains. Any of the ones that look at Shelly's presentation, look at her list. She had a, a slide with every single whole grain, pretty much spelt the millet and all these different things. They all, you generally cook the same way. You cook them in water, you boil them in water. Uh, some take a little less water, some take more, some take longer, some take less. But that's basically how you can cook um, whole grains. And so it's really an easy way to make your diet a lot healthier if you learn to um, to um, to cook them and use them in all these different versatile ways. So I'm just seasoning a little bit with a little bit of pepper, not too much salt. Shelly makes sure I'm not I'm aware of that because it is important to maintain an eye on salt. So our mushrooms are going, getting a little brown. Um, and so one thing I'm thinking about now is I've got my grains cooked, but they're dry and I'm, I'm getting these mushrooms and vegetables sauteed, but these are kind of dry now too. Sometimes mushrooms release a little bit of liquid and that's good. So in this case, I want a little bit of liquid, but you see everything's looking a little dry. So it's like, I don't want a dry kind of, um, not. You know, I don't want a dry dish that's not going to taste good. So one thing I'm doing 
um, is I'm using vegetable stock. And that's what this is. Um, I often make my own vegetable stock, but you can buy it totally fine. Um, I recommend buying the stuff that's low sodium because stocks, oftentimes they add a ton of salt. So it is easy to get carried away with how much salt you're eating if you're not using a low sodium um, stock. So, and what I'm using, I talked about this, I think in the first session I did is this stuff. I think this stuff is great. It's called Better Than Bouillon. Um, it's a paste, you keep it in the fridge and then you just mix in like a teaspoon, it tells you on the jar, a teaspoon of the paste with water for I think each cup of stock, what I, the proportions are on here. Um, and you just mix it into water and then you've got vegetable stock. So there is a little bit of salt in here, so I am gonna be mindful of that. That's why I didn't add much to it. So I've got my mushrooms. Now I'm gonna throw in my kale. Everything's smelling good, it's sounding good. This is just some kale I chopped up um, ahead of time. And same thing, I wanna kind of get everything sauteing for a couple minutes before I add my stock. And this is looking real nice. I think in my last session, I talked about cooking, not just with your, with sight, but with sound too. And this is um, an example of that. If things are starting to burn, if my heat's too high, uh, as you cook more and you practice more, you'll learn these things. You'll learn like, oh, that's not sounding right. That's sounding like something's burning or something. I do that all the time. I sometimes have the heat on a little too high. I'm still getting used to this stove. We just moved a couple months ago and this stove sometimes gets me. I think it's cooking one way, but it's the heat's too high. Um, so I'm always listening just as much as I am watching and, you know, in this case, touching, stirring with my spoon. And this is beautiful. I mean, again, you can use whatever you want. You can use different vegetables if you don't like mushrooms. Um, the idea is to cook the vegetables, cook the grain, mix them together, but have some kind of flavoring to it. So now you see this kale is starting to cook a little bit, but kale needs a few more minutes. So I'm gonna add some of the stuff. This is a cup of stock. And you see the sound totally change as soon as uh, I added the liquid. And now come take a look at the pan. I just wanna show you. So you see there's a little bit of liquid in there and that's fine. A lot of this is gonna evaporate off um, while it's cooking. And uh, I'm, I actually kept, I'm gonna add the rest of my stock because I don't want all of it. Um, so basically now I'm just letting this go and cooking it. And if I have some extra liquid in this case, I want that. I want it to kind of soak into the whole grains. That's good. If I'm making something else, if I was serving this on its own, maybe I wouldn't want a bunch of liquid. So these are just little things um, to keep in mind, it, uh, it does depend on what you're making um, to, you know, in, in this case, you know, what you're making, how, you, how you're cooking, what you're making based on the, the end result. I don't want a dry, unflavored stuffing. I don't want a soggy stuffing either. So that's why I added about a cup of stock. It's looking real nice right now. You could add some spices to it. I'm keeping it simple for now and I didn't, you know, you saw I just did salt and pepper and a little bit of vegetable stock, but you could add some herbs, you could add some dry herbs, really anything you like. Um, but again, I'm giving you the, the canvas and then letting you do what you like. So I kept it really simple, letting this cook for a few more minutes and then we're going to mix it into our um, farro and wild rice and we're going to have um, a nice uh, plant-based um, stuffing. And so this would be a great thing to bring to the Thanksgiving table um, next week, you know, or, or, or not, or just in the future. It's just, uh, uh, it's so versatile. There's so much you can do here um, when you start to learn and practice how to make these whole grains. So um, I'm going to, this needs a couple more minutes to cook. So I'm going to let that happen. And in the meantime, I'm going to start talking about the third thing we're making. I should have turned my pot on. 
But so as I said, I made a big batch of farro and by big batch, I mean one cup. And if we want to talk about, I know Shelly appreciates this a lot too. If you want to talk about economical, cooking this way is not expensive in the least bit. When you cook a cup of a whole grain, a cup of quinoa, a cup of farro, brown rice, whatever it is, we're talking about pennies. Like this does not cost very much money. So this is a very efficient and economical way to feed yourself or other people um, and ma possibly many people for very little cost. So that's another reason why, as I say, those are two of my principles of cooking. That's another reason why I love cooking this way and batch cooking allows me to do that. So I cooked one cup of farro and I'll show you one cup of farro resulted in the bowl that I'm gonna use for the stuffing and this much more. So you see, I just cooked it, I put it in. This is what it looks like when it's ready. Kind of looks like little uh, like uh, corn or something, I don't know. Oh, barley, kind of looks like barley because it's similar to barley. That's another great whole grain. Um, so I'm gonna make a farro soup um, out of this remaining. So I just had this left over. It could have been, you know, two, three days ago. I'm like, wow, what do I do? To me, making a soup is one of the easiest way to just use up a bunch of stuff. Um, so for my soup, I've got this pot in the back. So the soup we're going to make in this red pot. And again, the farro is the building block. I'm just building the dish around that. So um, all I've got here, I just went diving into the fridge. Nothing complicated. The other half of that kale that I put in here is right here. I had a lot of kale. So I was like, whatever, I'll just put it into the soup. Easy way to make healthy, tasty, add some extra nutrition to your food. So I've got some leftover kale. These are just some potatoes and some carrots. That's it, nothing too complicated. Um, and um, potatoes in this case is the second um, whole grain, or excuse me, carp, I guess I should say. It's not a whole grain, but it's the second um, whole grain or carb we're putting into this dish. And potatoes, I, I use them on purpose, A, because I had them and I needed to use them, um, but B, because it's easy, you get a bad rap with potatoes. You think, oh, it's so boring, but actually good potatoes are super, super good. And if you, uh, like, if you buy, it's also something that's really cheap to buy organic. And if you buy organic potatoes, the difference is so, it's such a big difference from buying just like your standard non-organic, like big, brown potatoes. Um, those are fine, but they just don't taste as good. And that's why um, people end up, you know, eating them or frying them or baking them. But these are just some nice potatoes. And the cool thing about, especially with organic potatoes, is I leave the skin on. So you don't have to do much to it. I just rinse it with water, make sure there's no dirt or anything on it. And then I dice it up into cubes. And that's it. You don't have to peel them because um, it's, 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 there's nothing really to worry about in terms of pesticides and whatnot. So I've got those things. I put a little bit of olive oil, again, about a tablespoon or so, maybe a little more, but that's going to make a big pot of soup. So I'm okay with that. And then I've got just some yellow onion that's going in there. Throw that all into my soup, into my soup pot, I should say. Give that a stir. And as the onions are going, I'm coming back to this. Now, check it out. This is, this is looking real nice. And you see most of that liquid evaporated. So my whole thing about having some moisture for my dressing, for my uh, stuffing, hmm, that's, that's maybe a little harder to do now. Not a big deal. This is where we improvise. We're flexible with cooking. Um, so this is pretty much, Cooked. I'm just going to give it a couple shakes in the pan. So again, to review, mushrooms, a little bit of red onion and kale. That's it. And then we've got my previously cooked whole grains. So a lot going on. I know you hear it all, you see it all. But we're going to go for it. We're going to turn this off. I'm going to grab this pan. I'm going to scoop it right into my bowl. And this is the easiest way to do this for me. I put the bowl right on my lap. If the bowl's on the counter, it's too high for me to reach. It gets too complicated. So that's it. 
I'm actually going to trade these places because I like this location. Turn that back burner off. So I wasn't kidding about efficient. You see, one thing done, on to the next. So my onions are going here. Again, I'm going to add just a little, just a pinch of salt and pepper. And this is an important step. You want to season your food as you go. I'm using the same spoon. It's not a big deal. It's similar flavors. Um, and again, it's efficient. I don't want to dirty a million spoons. So, okay. The onions are going here. Let's come back to my stuffing. Look at that. Now we mix it all in. And if I was serving this tonight, if I wanted to serve it kind of warm, this is what I would do. I would, I would have the room temperature grains and then I would have the hot vegetables and I'd mix it all in. And if I taste this and it's tasting kind of dry or it's not tasting very, you know, need something, this is an easy place to add a little like red wine vinegar, balsamic vinegar, something to give it a little moisture. Acid always helps, again, with these whole grains, just like I was saying with quinoa. Acid helps kind of wake things up. It helps brighten the dish. And acid can be vinegar, it can be lemon juice, it can be lime juice, whatever it is. Um, so this, I'm gonna taste. It's actually quite good. It doesn't need anything. So boom, that's done. All right. I'm obviously not going to make this soup all the way to the end. I'm just going to get it going to show you. But now my onions uh, have softened up a little. I'm going to go straight in with my carrots, with my potatoes. And you can put these in at different stages. I'm just making it easy right now. I'm dumping everything in at the same time. Kale, potatoes, carrots, all in at the same time. Let's give it a stir. We're just trying to get it going. And the farro I'm not gonna put in now because this is already cooked. All I wanna do is kind of warm this up in the soup. So uh, I'm actually not gonna put it into the soup now. I wanna get these veggies cooking. So this will be ready in no time, only like 15, 20 minutes from now. So I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do now. You can stay there. I'm just grabbing some water. Um, so, once these have a couple of minutes, start to brown a little and cook. And this is just a simple way of doing it. I'm not overcomplicating it. Yes, you could have added things in different stages. Yes, you can, you know, do a lot of different things to make this more refined. I'm not worrying about that. Soup, ultimately, I want it to, to be, everything to be cooked, and to be in some kind of broth. And that's, you know, that's kind of all I'm, I'm, um, I'm going for. So I threw it all in here. It's going to cook when I add some liquid to it. So I'm going to add a little bit more pepper, just black pepper. Again, this is a place you can add some dried herbs if you want, oregano, rosemary, um, which grows all over the place. It's usually an easy thing to find fresh. You could add, um, you know, any kind of dried herb you want. Uh, I actually don't, I cook with a lot of spices, but when I'm making a soup like this, I don't use a lot of spices because I kind of really want to highlight the flavor of the vegetables. So I'm going to dump some water in here. This probably won't be enough. I'll have to refill my kettle, but um, I want to show you that I'm going to use the same vegetable stock again. So um, this is what makes soup really good flavors when you use good stock. Again, I use, I often make my own stock. Uh, in this case, I didn't have time. So I'm using this vegetable stock. So if it's, if it's about a spoonful of this paste for one cup, I'm gonna use a lot more than one cup of liquid. There's gonna be like probably like 10 or 12 cups, if not more. So that's why I feel okay. And I'm just, again, I'm, I'm estimating because I'm, I'm comfortable doing that. I'm just throwing a couple spoonfuls of this in here. So again, earlier I mixed the paste in with the water uh, ahead of time. Now I'm gonna basically throw the paste in, add water to it. It's the same idea. You're getting all the, the great flavor from the stock 
without having to, uh, you know, create an extra step. So I just kind of added two tablespoons of my paste. And I need a little more water. So I'm going to add that to my soup and it'll, you know, it'll just take a couple, couple of minutes to bring it to a boil. So I have my lid. This is a stage now I've got my vegetables cooking. I added my liquid, I added my stock. Uh, now I put the lid on because I really want to bring the temperature up. I want to bring this up to a boil and I turn the heat up as well. So this is, um, this is the stage. This is kind of a thing with any kind of soup I'm going to make. This is what I do. I turn the heat up. I bring this liquid to a boil. Once this comes to a boil, then I'll turn the heat down. I'll let it simmer for, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. Um, again, these things in here are going to cook potatoes and carrots are going to cook real fast. And then I have my farro, which as I said, is already cooked. So I don't need to worry about that. I just add it in um, after that. So um, so that's pretty much all I'm going to do. Uh, I also am adding some beans as well. These are just some, some white beans out of the can um, that I'm going to add in for extra nutrition, extra hardiness. I like hearty soups. So in about three, four minutes when this comes to a boil, I'm turning the heat down. I'm giving it five minutes or so. Then a few minutes before I think it's done, I'm adding in my farro and my beans. And that's it. You got a pot of soup ready to go um, for that. So um, I'm going to bring the camera back to the counter. And great. Thank you, my wife. Um, I'm going to, if there's any questions so far, I know I kind of moved real fast. I do have one more thing I wanted to talk about in terms of, um, whole grains. I was going to talk about overnight oats, um, because we talked about that last time. And I know Shelly is a really, really big proponent of how to integrate, um, you know, any kind of healthy whole grains into your day. So these are all kind of more lunch and dinner type dishes. I did want to talk real quickly about overnight oats, but um, Franklin, if there are any questions, since I was kind of moving quickly there, uh, it's hard to cook three dishes in, you know, 25 minutes, but I'm doing my best. You are uh, very ambitious as yeah. usual. Yeah, there are, there, are, there are three questions, actually. Great. Um, one question. Those. Yeah. So once cooked, how long do grains last? Yeah. So once cooked grains, uh, I mean, people will say probably up to a week. I think that's that's probably accurate. Yeah. Grains are especially if you don't do anything to them. If you cook them with other things, then the other things could maybe start going, you know, funky and that could have impacted. But when I, what I'm showing you of just making the grains on their own with just cooking in water, nothing added to it, they'll last for a week. So you can have, like I, you saw, I just have my Tupperware containers. I keep those in the fridge. And then one day if I don't have much time and I want to eat a healthy lunch instead of an you know, going and getting a burrito or something. I'll just throw some of the whole grains in a bowl and I'll see what else I have and I'll throw together like a quick salad. It's, it's great flexibility, so. Okay, uh, next question. How do you make your vegetable stock? So vegetable stock, I'm probably gonna talk about this in another, ish, in another um, session because making stock, it's a very useful and um, helpful thing to do. The basic idea of making any stock is very simple. You just put whatever it is. So in this case, it's vegetables. If you're making chicken stock or, you know, some kind of like beef or whatever, then it's bones. But with vegetable stock, you just put a bunch of vegetables in a pot with water, pinch of salt, you cook it for, you know, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes at the minimum. The best is when you have a lot of time and you can kind of put it on low heat and let it cook for a couple of hours. Um, and that's it. And that's vegetable stock. And stock is, if you're not familiar with the term, it's just... A, a flavored water in a sense, you know, a, a flavor, you're, you're taking the essence of that thing. So if you're making chicken stock or something, you're taking chicken bones and you're cooking it and you're getting all that stuff out of there and, um, and it's going into the liquid and then you have a flavorful liquid. The jar I was showing is just basically a concentrated version of that. Uh, you can also get powdered 
um, chicken, you know, or excuse me, vegetable stock or whatever. Um, and those work as well. You, I would stay away from um, some of the more kind of conventional stock, like bouillon cubes and that kind of thing. Those are usually packed with like a lot of preservatives and whatnot. This stuff that I was showing is actually really good ingredients. It's just vegetables um, that have been roasted and cooked and, and cooked down to a paste. So I'll talk more about stock in the future. But yeah, basic idea is into pot with water, cook until done. That's about it. Okay. Uh, a comment from one of the participants in tonight's uh, presentation, um, actually one of the uh, individuals who's watching you, is that last night uh, he was inspired by your hummus uh, recipe. And oh, cool. Uh, and so he can't wait till, uh, till he starts uh, uh, following uh, your lead here tonight. Uh, awesome. So Thank really you. Nice. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. Uh, next question. What are your top three grains, types of grains? Yeah, good question. Well, my wife is allergic to quinoa. Otherwise, quinoa, that's one of the reasons I don't make it uh, hardly at all. Um, that would probably be up there. I love quinoa. I love how versatile it is. Uh, and it's so good for you. I love that I can use it as a rice because I eat a lot of rice. I love, I love rice. I've come from a rice eating culture, so it's hard for me not to. But when I want to make it a little healthier, I love the idea of using quinoa. So that's probably one of them. Um, I'm Iranian. I grew up eating basmati rice my whole life. Uh, it's not the healthiest. It's not unhealthy. Um, but I, that's, that's got to be probably up there uh, for sure. That's the honest answer. And then um, the third would probably be, yeah, let's see, quinoa. I mean... I like them all. I really do. It's so easy to make them. And that's actually something I want to talk about after this question is um, they're just so easy to, to work with. I like them. I really like them all. I love farro. I love the flexibility. I love that you can use these in place. I also like brown rice, um, wild rice. I told you I'm a rice eater. I love all that stuff. So I just love the flexibility of being able to make, take one inexpensive, super healthy ingredient cook it very simply, and then be able to put it into a soup, a salad, a stuffing. Um, you know, you can use it, you can make things out of whole grains and then stuff that if you ever see like stuffed pumpkins or stuffed cabbage or anything like that, it's, it's such an easy way to, um, to do that. So I, I like them all really. I don't think there's a whole grain that I've eaten that I don't like. Okay, um, uh, we have a sort of a tool question. Do you have any tricks to taking things such as grains out of boiling water? Yeah, great question. And that was actually, I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Uh, I wanna make sure I, I mention this. I don't think I'll get to do my oat thing quite yet. So we'll do that in a future session. Um, but I did wanna mention just the master, I said that the master recipe for, for cooking whole grains. So I'm really glad you brought that up. I'm gonna show you how I make whole grains. So unless you're feeding like an army, uh, what I was talking about is you cook like a cup of whole grains, uh, of raw whole grains, a cup, a cup and a half is quite a lot because it usually ends up making like triple the size. So a couple things I wanted to show is uh, a good old measuring cup um, is helpful to have. I have, this is a two cup measuring cup because I like to have a little extra space. So even though I'm probably only using like a half a cup or a, one cup of grains, it's nice. The other thing I want to show is this one's kind of cool because it's got the cup measurements on the inside as well. I always, for me with my hands and lack of core strength, it's hard to like hold it up and then I have to like flip it around and measure. So I like being able to just put this flat on the, on my lap or the whole grain in and I can see on the inside how much I've got. So this is a easy, cheap thing to get that's been quite, quite helpful. Um, so measure your whole grain out. Here's the trick. This is what I meant by it's foolproof. Different whole grains have different ratios of water. So if you wanna get that like perfect fluff quinoa or bulgur or couscous or whatever, just Google or look up the ratio. Some, some are two to one, some are one and a half to, you know, of water to grain, whatever it is cook it as directed. If you just want the easiest way to make whole, pretty much any whole grain and never have to worry, just fill up your pot with much more water than you would need. So um, in this case, I wanted to just show, this is the size pot I use. 
Um, it's just, I don't know what size it is, but it's, you, you get the sense. Um, I just fill it up like three quarters of the way with water. And whether I'm cooking a cup of farro or half a cup, whatever it is, bring the water to a boil, add the whole grain in, keep an eye on it until it's cooked. Uh, and you know that by just, you know, tasting it or, or stirring it around, you know, keep an eye on it. Definitely don't like walk away, um, you know, check on it every few minutes, but some things cook really fast. Um, and then, and some things take a little longer. And then this is the key thing that you do need. So I'm glad the person asked about tools. This is a fine mesh sieve or strainer. So I think I bought this at Target. These are cheap and easy, but you do want a fine sieve because grains oftentimes are small. Think about like something like couscous or something like that. You've got really small or even quinoa. Um, you've got really small grains. So get yourself one of these and then you cannot mess up whole grains. All you do is you cook it and if you have a lot of water left over, that's fine. You just drain your pot into this and off you go, you're, you're ready to go. So sometimes I want something like really nice and fluffy, like if I'm making couscous or if I'm making quinoa and I really wanna like get a certain like fluffiness to it and get it just right. Then I'll, you know, really do like two cups of water to one cup of quinoa and, you know, turn it on and medium low heat and watch it and kind of get it just right. That's fine. But if I'm just trying to be efficient and I'm just trying to cook like with everything I made for you guys tonight, with the farro, the wild rice, and the quinoa, all I did was just filled up my pot with water, put it on the stove, brought it to a boil, threw my whole grains in one at a time. And I, and I literally, this is efficiency. I used the same pot three times in a row. I didn't wash it in between. I just rinsed it out, you know, made one whole grain, drained it, put it in a container, did the same process, made the second whole grain, drained it, put it in a container. So again, this is easy and um, efficient cooking. Uh, I wanna demystify it. I don't wanna make it hard for you all, for anyone to, to integrate healthy things into their diet. So that's what I meant by the foolproof way of making whole grains. Some things take a lot longer. Brown rice takes almost an hour to cook. Um, you know, farro, I think Trader Joe's even sells now they call it like quick cooking farro. I think it's like 10 minutes. So you can have cooked farro in 10 minutes. So by the time you're chopping other things, your farro is cooked and ready. So okay. long answer to the question, but that was an important point. I did want to make sure um, if you don't have this, then you have to rely on the correct ratio of water to whole grain to cook your whole grain right. But if you do invest in one of these, it's not expensive at all. And just cook your whole grains, drain them in here, rinse them with water, uh, and you've got, you know, everything you need. All right. Uh, just a couple of comments from Shelly. Uh, protein is what you need to worry about going bad faster, particular right. animal protein. So keep an eye on that, folks. And also plant foods last much longer in the fridge, uh, just like Arash said. So yeah, yeah. always good cool. to have Start Shelly's off. wisdom. So what that means is if you were to cook the farro with butter or if you were to use cream or milk or you know whatever something like that that's when you want to keep an eye on on uh how long it's in there it'll still last like any food will last for a couple of days at least in the fridge but this way that i'm talking it five days at least and it's totally fine because i didn't do anything to it just water whole grain that's it so. okay do you bake bread that was one of the questions I don't know. Uh, bread's one of those things. It's a whole other realm. Uh, I haven't gotten into it. It's a, that is something that I found to be as confident as I've become in the kitchen with my lap and the cutting board and doing everything. Um, bread baking, it's with all the flour and you really got to work it. I feel like my small little cutting board on my lap would limit me. So that's been one of the reasons I've been a little intimidated. I know there's machines where you can kind of dump everything in and do it. Um, I haven't done that. Um, I have friends who bake good bread. I, I'm lucky to enjoy some of theirs, but um, but that that is one thing I will say with the with the cutting board and everything that it's a little hard when you have this very limited space. I think with bread you want plenty of space. You want to it's you know flour gets everywhere. I'll probably make a giant mess if I try to bake bread. So I have not done that. All right. All right. Any okay. other questions? Comments? No, that's uh, those are all the questions. Did you have anything else that you wanted to share before we? call it a night no i don't think uh i do i'm just looking yeah i i hope this was helpful again i know um 
I know I'm covering a lot. I'm trying to 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 in, include a lot. But my goal, as always, uh, I think I said this the last two times. Don't worry too much about the specifics of like how much of something I put in. There's a bazillion recipes out there you can look up. If any of this looked good to you, you can look up recipes. You can ask me. I can try to send you a recipe. I don't really cook from any. I just kind of cook on my experience. But the point is, I hope. Again, try to if you take away anything from any of my cooking sessions, it's the the larger ideas and then how to tailor that to yourself. If you don't like mushrooms, don't make my mushroom stuffing. You can make your stuffing with whatever you do like. If you don't like wild rice, use farro. If you don't like farro, use quinoa. So I hope it's the the focus is more on the um, tools and the, the 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 principles I talk about and less about like you know how much of this did he put in there and not you know use your taste buds, get in the kitchen. What I want is for all of you to get more experience and comfortable cooking um, and doing these things yourself. And you, can, you can't go wrong if you're tasting your food and trying things and ultimately you'll, take it, you'll make it taste the way you want it to. So um, yeah, okay. that's all I'll say. So next month we're doing vegetables, right? Give us a sort of a sneak preview of what you're thinking. There's no way we can talk about vegetables in one session. So I'm probably going to have to do two sessions on vegetables. That's my thought right now. Uh, I, I don't know. I cook seasonally, so I'm not going to talk about tomatoes and zucchini because that's kind of summer vegetables. So if we're talking about next month, it'll probably be more fall winter vegetables, maybe pumpkin, maybe broccoli, cauliflower, uh, or maybe just like your standard vegetables that are kind of available all year round things that are very humble like potatoes or carrots or cabbage or celery things that like people don't really think are like very exciting maybe that'll be the challenge is for me to come up with some things that are super simple easy to find stuff you can get year round um and how to make that taste good so that's what i'm thinking right now but i've got a little time to think about it okay all righty thank you so much arash uh, and thank you to everyone who uh, stuck around uh, to enjoy tonight's presentation Looking forward to getting some good feedback next month to see if you guys were able to replicate some of these recipes. Um, it's This is a difficult time because half the people that I could see were they were drooling the whole time. The other <laughs> half were sending chats. They were saying that they're so hard, they're so hungry uh, right now. That was now. me. So that, that was, was you. me. There you I go, was Shelley. hungry 10 minutes in, actually. Yeah, it doesn't take much <laughs> to get Shelly going with her hunger. Uh, I've succeeded, yeah. Indeed. So Shelly, you're going to be doing a vegetable session too next month. Yeah, no, next week. Next, next, is it next yeah. week? Yeah, uh, we're yeah, working yes, next, on sorry, veggies. Next week, sorry. Yeah. Yes. yeah, we're going to go through a lot of the ve the veggies and colors and rainbow and um, uh, organic and just all that GMOs. I'll go over all the veggie stuff next week. Great. So maybe Franklin to answer that last question, not a question, but for that preview is, as usual, I really like that Shelly and I build off of each other. And so I'll wait and see what Shelly talks about. We'll kind of brainstorm a little bit. And again, if people have feedback, if you have suggestions or things you want us to do or cook, or again, I only am doing based on what I think is most relevant and helpful. Um, but please send questions or feedback or suggestions. Uh, tell us you want us to, you want to learn how to make a certain thing or perfect a certain technique i'm more than happy to tackle it however possible so right. um please do so and uh yeah we'll, we'll have we'll have some more cooking fun okay all right thanks shelly uh for jumping in hi um, everyone all right uh, again everyone tonight's session was recorded so you'll all uh, get a recording of it uh on monday uh so rest assured and um just want to recognize our friends at the Reef Foundation for making these kinds of presentations possible. So have a good uh, night uh, and happy cooking to you, as uh, my favorite chef uh, says. And yes, Arash, you're one of my favorite chefs, but- uh, That's Jacques Pepin, right? Jacques Pepin is, is my <laughs> ultimate uh, favorite he's, chef, so. He's, he's one of the reasons I got into cooking, watching him on uh, Saturday mornings when I was yep. a kid. Yeah, like, likewise. <laughs> Okay, everyone, have a good night and have a good weekend as well. Take care until next Bye. time. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Shelly. Thanks for Bye. 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 Thanks, Arash. Good